Hi there, I'm Lucy Collett and congratulations! You've made the excellent decision of selecting Nut's regular game show, Girl Got Game, and this week we've only gone and done an E3 special. Yup, just last week over 48,200 game crazy journalists flew, drove, hitched, walked and segwayed to the huge convention centre in Los Angeles for E3, the world's biggest games expo. And though it certainly got a bit funky on the show floor, and there was more dodgy facial hair than a Kings of Leon gig, it was a terrific showcase for the games industry, stuffed to the gills with news, launches and lovely next-gen consoles. And we were lucky enough to go and look. We've come home, slept off the jet lag, necked our duty-free allowance and figured out the 10 best things about E3 2013. We know what the consoles look like. Front and centre in both of the big platform holders presentations were the actual, physical next-gen boxes. Microsoft debuted their big old box at an event in May, but this was the first time we clapped eyes on the PS4. Unsurprisingly, they're both black and shiny, with the PS4 boasting more angular edges and the Xbox One squat and beefy. Gun to head, we prefer the PS4, but like so many things in the world, it's what's inside that counts. We know how much they're going to cost. Tell Nan to start saving, both of these bad boys are going to cost a mint. Microsoft broke first with their price, a whopping £429. Then, a few hours later, to much over-enthusiastic American whooping and hollering, Sony unveiled a £349 price for its console. So the PS4 will be £80 whole pounds cheaper. But don't forget though that the Xbox will come with a sophisticated Kinect 2.0 sensor camera. But on price alone, Sony takes this round too. New Halo is coming! To much buzz in the Xbox conference, an all-new Halo game was teased. And by teased, we mean hardly even the slightest of knicker flashes. A teaser trailer was unveiled and an impressive new enemy was shown rising out of the desert and Master Chief turned up in a scratty old cape. A cape! And then just this single word, Halo, was painted across the huge video screens. Still, you know, new Halo! Xbox have some great exclusives. Price apart, it's the game's exclusives that will make the fans opt for their console of choice and Microsoft probably won this round. Only one of two McLaren P1 hypercars in the world rose out of the stage to announce a Forza Motorsport 5 launch title exclusive. Alongside a brilliant looking Dead Rising 3, X Modern Warfare Dev Respawn's first game Titanfall, Sunset Overdrive, a mental mutant killer from Naughty Dog, Roman Hack and Slash Arise, and strange game slash TV show hybrid Quantum Break from the Alan Wake makers. Not bad Microsoft, not bad at all. The PS4 has some great exclusives too. Sony then came back slugging with a fine roster of exclusives of their own. Most interestingly, the Order 1886, an alternative history shooter made by God of War's Santa Monica Studios, where shady Victorian badass knights take on supernatural enemies with futuristic weapons in a foggy London. Add free racing game Drive Club, infamous Second Son, Shooter Killzone Shadowfall and a brilliant new indie game Octodad. There's plenty to keep PS4 owners happy too. Electronic Arts had a super strong show. Alongside your FIFAs, Battlefields and Need for Speeds, Electronic Arts showed off Titanfall, the new game from the chaps who created the Modern Warfare brand. It's a man versus mech's persistent online shooter where you get scooped up by a house-sized robot and rain down death on pesky humans. We had a sneaky behind the scenes peek and the balance looks perfect. These guys don't make a bad game and it looks like immense fun. Also brilliant, Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare, a four player third person shooter where you combine to take out the lurching zombie invasion using maximum cuteness mostly. Quite how developer PopCap has turned a 2D tower defence mobile hit into such an incredible looking 3D shooter is some kind of crazy games alchemy, but this is one game we are utterly desperate to play. Ubisoft also hit the ground running. Never write off those creative Frenchies. Ubisoft had a lot to say, and apart from the hoot heavy South Park game finally being announced for release this year, they introduced two new incredible games. The Crew and The Division. The Crew is an always-on racer where you and your trums can traverse pretty much the whole of America. 
One of their dev teams did a coaster -to coast trip in an hour and a half in silly cool cars. It's all one world, so you can bomb along on your own or just bowl up and join your mates for seamless multiplay. Plus, it looks more attractive than Angelina Jolie with a pint of lager in one hand and a pork scratching in the other. Meanwhile, The Division is a pretty, pretty, pretty post-apocalyptic shooter, with you leading a team of sleeper agents trying to keep some semblance of authority after a flu virus epidemic wipes out most of America. That's by shooting people, obviously, but it does look really interesting. Plus, there's some crazy tablet crossover. Keep an eye on this one. Plus, Watch Dogs really does look to be shaping up to be one of the games of the year. If we're not sure about the new controllers. Having sat down and played on both new systems, well, our jury is out on the new controllers. With the battery flipped and a new internal layout, the Xbox One controller felt weirdly light and your brain can't help but equate lightness to a drop in quality. Similarly, we much prefer Sony's new DualShock controller layout, but using the touchscreen on top felt a bit weird. Having to remove your fingers from the trigger and flip them to stab a touchscreen on the other side of the controller was not a natural thing to do. But hey, we'll get used to them. The cloud will revolutionize gaming. Xbox have made a big commitment to cloud gaming and reckon it could prove the competitive difference in the console walls. Why? How? Let me explain. In Forza Motorsport 5, for instance, the telemetry of every single lap you complete is uploaded to the cloud. This allows them to create a virtual you, a car that looks like yours, drives exactly like you, including rubbish corner cutting and braking a little bit too late. It will then put you in other people's games, with the idea being that others won't know if it's you playing or a cloud-generated you. Spooky! Christmas is going to be amazing! So, to clarify, before the end of the year, we'll have dropped in our gaming laps two new consoles, GTA 5, Call of Duty Ghost, Battlefield 4, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, FIFA 14, Forza Motorsport 5, Watch Dogs, Killzone Shadowfall, Plants vs Zombies, Garden Warfare, Dead Rising 5, Need for Speed Rivals, Saints Row 5, Dead Rising 3, Wolf Seed The New Order, Spin Cell, Blacklist and Batman Arkham Origins! Woo! And there. Those are our 10 favourite things about E3 2013. It was a good one. Roll on next year, and roll on the next Girl Got Game. Hitting the internet's like a piano dropped from a plane in a week or so. Stay blunt tuned. <laughs>